Hello, and welcome to the first video on track where we'll be covering uh, for the MDS service the service request module. Uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is open up a browser. So I just went ahead and chose Chrome. And then in the URL box, I will type in mesa-cc.icontrack.com. Uh, of course, this is Mesa specific. For any other for any other accounts, we will go ahead and just use your uh, like if it's Gateway CC, just put Gateway CC here, Emma Gilbert, Mesa, etc., so on and so forth. Uh, after that, we get the track login screen. So I'll put in your username. I'll type in my password here, and then log in. So. As I said, this training is going to be covering the service request module. So here is the service request module. And in that, you can submit a request, request queue, yeah. search history, or view reports. Uh, the only things that I will be going over are these first three. Of course, you can feel more than free to access the track manual, uh, the resources that we do have on Rico, and uh, you can learn all about these modules, but we'll just go over these first few. So there's two ways that I can look at submitting a request. I can click Submit Request here, or I can go to the Copy or Printer Pack Service Request here. So I'll go ahead and click this bottom one. And then it'll bring up this request information. So if a user is wanting to submit a request, say, for instance, the print quality is bad in their printer, they would go here, Copy or Printer Pack Service Request, click there, and then the request type. We have all sorts of options here for you. Uh, but we want to say there's a poor, poor print quality. Uh, it's pretty low priority just for this example because they hardly use it. They just want it to be looked at at some point. And the asset tag that we have uh, on this printer will just be uh, inputted here. And then they can click where it's at. This pulls everything from track that was previously input, so we can find it easily. Uh, the description, you, they can always type in any information here, so poor quality output, uh, prints, streaks, down page. So this is for them to be able to specify what's going on with the They can also create their own reference number. Uh, so for instance, they wanted to pick a number and then give us a call at the copy center and say, hey, I made a reference number, blah, 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 and get it there. So in this case, I'll just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is it a scheduled task? No, this is just a normal thing, but you can always schedule it. You say yes, what's the description, about 50 times, daily, weekly, monthly. But in this, in this example, it's not. Uh, the contact is going to be myself, since I'm putting it in and knows my information. And then, of course, the new operator, our to select an operator, you click on New Operator, and then they can choose to select an operator. Or, more, more cases than not, they're just going to submit a request. Uh, okay, so, an error message. Um, Alright, well, let's go ahead and... Oh, it says this is required. So they're going to sign in to myself. Uh, submit a request. And there we have it. So the request is imported into the system. And as the first responder, you would mainly be going to request queue to see what is pulling from track, if there's any toner requests, if there's any service requests in this queue. As you can see, there's a lot of toner requests. These will build up over time just because, I mean, it has 5% remaining in this black cartridge. These things are so high yield. Uh, generally, I like to personally keep them between 1% and 2% or all the way down. Uh, they're really good at communicating with us as far as uh, when things run completely out and the functionality stops, they definitely let us know. Okay, so I have dispatching under this and also the, this one, which they're both the same thing. Um, so it's probably due to that error that happened before. I'll go to the dispatching one first. And this is where I didn't assign it to anybody. So you notice here it says, oh, it's been assigned to me, so I'll accept it. Uh, if you go on the left hand side here, you can also choose other technicians to place over here. So, say for instance, I wanted to remove myself. I removed myself and I wanted to put 
uh, Todd Salvo. So I would just take him and I would put him over here and he can come in and accept it or if this is him you can click auto accept so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and move that and I'll put myself back in there. Oops. Uh, click the right arrow. There we go. And then auto accept start. Now I didn't really have to do anything but I push start when I'm starting the job and then when I'm finished replacing the toner cartridge or doing whatever I can click complete. So once you click complete this is a setting that you can change in your preferences which will go right, right after the explanation of this in the search history uh, where you can disable this or enable this and change some other settings. Uh, we require at this uh, account that the resolution for the ticket be inputted. So my resolution is just uh, test submission for video. I'm going to go ahead and copy that just because I know I have to close another one. And just update the ticket. Since this has been completed, the request will go out of uh, the request queue once you push update. Oh. Okay, so telling me that it's loading, it's waiting. And don't worry if it takes a little bit of time to load. Sometimes the system will uh, get slower at parts of the day just because access to track and how many people might be using it at any given time. So sometimes it does load for a while. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just pause it until it finishes. Okay, now that it's uh, finished loading there, we end up coming back to the request queue after that's been completed. As you see, the second one is gone, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, go into product view. We can see where it's at. That's another good specification that we should talk about as well. We know the serial here, the service tag number, the make, the model, uh, where it's at, what floor, what building, etc. Uh, all that information will actually be right underneath this thing. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and take it myself, auto accept, start, and test submission. Video, so, okay, update. And there we go. So, as you saw, it's a little bit faster this no, time. No, good. Uh, so, that's how you uh, place and complete service requests. You can see okay. a quick view here and just kind of a basic description. But if you want more, you go into product view. You want to actually do it, go into product view. Uh, so the next thing is search history. Okay. Say, for instance, I want to right. check, um, like, what is the history the on 1229480, which I just put in. Uh, multiple tickets for this in, uh, in order to go through, job. The, through the ticket. Um, Okay, so that's just me. Uh, here's some request numbers. And it doesn't look like this is uh, working out the same exact way that I wanted to use it. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, there's that. It was completed today. And it looks like the same printer. Here's the service tag. Okay, let me go. We can always print that. And History. Let's go to maintenance history and see. Okay, great. So here is some maintenance history. I guess it was just backwards, so I apologize about that. Um, and you can get all the tags and maintenance history on this printer. Uh, so that's kind of how search history works. I'm going to stick. Don't use the Edge ID. Just go in a local ID. Or even if you have a serial number of that printer, you can always put that in. That's going to yield uh, much better results for you. And of course, you can specify who did what. Uh, I've just select all operators for that. Uh, so now that we've gone through the three modules here, I'd like to go under the administrative side um, of the service quest. So you click on the admin tab here, or if you're at the desktop, you can also click on the admin icon, which will bring everything in the admin section down in these little icons. So again, I'm just going to go to service request. The only type that I feel that needs to be changed, uh, doesn't need to be changed on a consistent basis, but needs to be changed to your liking as the track uh, manager of this, is preferences. So click on preferences, and you'll notice 
job notifications, it sends an email to the recipient requester. You can specify what the email is that it's being sent from. I just have a generic do not reply iOffice uh, corp.com. And then the email CC is myself, since I am the first responder for this account. Uh, I would put my email here so that I will get it whenever any service request gets put in. Uh, you can also give them feedback and type in a specialized message here if you'd like. Your Rico service supply request has been received. Um, we will be glad to uh, help you with any issue, you know, something to that effect. I'm just going to keep it plain and simple for ours. Uh, and then the footer, thank you, uh, Rico service ticket has been resolved. Once we complete it, this, this message will propagate to uh, whoever CC'd on it and whoever put in the submission as well if they put their email address in there. Uh, another thing is you might want to allow the operators to delete maintenance requests just in case there's something in there. Like I could have deleted that extra one uh, instead of just completing it. Uh, another thing is allow tracking of third-party invoices. Uh, be careful, just talk to your manager about whether this should be checked or not because it depends on how your invoicing works. Uh, you may not have those third party invoices going through track. So, uh, let's see, ticket summary. Of course, we want to include a ticket summary so people know what's going on from the same email address, CC yourself. And then this is going to whoever is being assigned that ticket. So. If I chose a different operator, they would get an email at their ticket that's specified within the users in the admin field. Uh, you've been assigned to a new request. Of course, you can put footer tickets. And then here's some extra options. Smartphone dispatching. If you wanted to go to your smartphone, you definitely can do that. Uh, schedule tasks. You can schedule your tasks if they would like to do that as well. Uh, auto archiving. Allow auto rejection. So if somebody doesn't reply within a specific amount of time, it will, like, it'll automatically reject the ticket from them and assign it to somebody else. Uh, call third-party web service. That's dependent on your account. Speak with your manager about that. Uh, require resolution. This is the area that I was talking about where that separate pop-up box comes up when you complete the ticket. If you have this unchecked, you can just complete the ticket and close it. But if you have it checked, it'll require you to put in what you did to finally resolve it. So, say, for instance, uh, replace toner. That was the only thing that was needed. You just say replace toner, save, update, and you're done. Uh, enable reference number. This is a nice thing that I like to keep just because it'll allow us to do it for internal reference numbers and then we can write down the number and say, hey, yeah, can you just reference this ticket number, blah, 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 and then I can find it really quickly. So I didn't want to make any changes from how I had it, so I'm just going to cancel out of that. Again, the first thing you see is desktop. You can go through here, where they have all the icons, or you can just go through the tabs. You click on service request. If you want to submit a request, submit request queue. And uh, then, of course, if you want to search through the archive ones, search history. So that's it for the service request. So that's all of service requests in a nutshell. And I hope this helped.